So welcome everybody to a new Bagdang uh, webinar. I am your host, Lavinia. Um, here is a, a brief outline of the webinar. Uh, today we are taking a tour of the most recent features uh, implemented in Eclair uh, Static Analysis Tool. It doesn't really matter if you are new to Eclair or if you are a 10-year customer and you know the tool like the back of your hand. Uh, today, you will learn how uh, smart features can always revolutionize the way you work. Uh, with Eclair, you can now uh, automatically file tickets on issue tracking systems, uh, which is key, for instance, when it comes to properly manage a team uh, working on a project that has to breach uh, means compliance. Uh, we then introduced a new selection, new selection facilities, and new report filters and formats that will help uh, Tier One and Tier Two uh, present their work uh, to the clients in a very, very clear way. And also, we developed a brand new plugin for Visual Studio. And who could better guide us through all these new useful tools, if not our developers themselves? Uh, today's main speakers come directly from the Creative Forge of Baxang. I am happy to present uh, Simone Ballerin, a software verification engineer, and uh, Michelangelo Bagnara, who is our GUI and ID specialist. Uh, Michelangelo and Simone will start their presentation after a special introduction from Roberto Bagnara, a software verification expert and co-founder of Bugseg. So let's all welcome uh, Roberto. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. I will give you a brief introduction on the role of tools uh, in MISA compliance as the topic of today concerns tools. So the reference document for compliance to standard uh, to the MISRA standard is MISRA Compliance 2020. And um, um, MISRA Compliance 2020 uh, title is Achieving Compliance with MISRA, C, uh, with MISRA Coding Guidelines. And uh, it, uh, it defines all what must be covered when making a claim of MISRA Compliance. So it's important to understand that MISRA compliance is, is more than, uh, than just uh, using uh, a tool. Um, and um, for example, you need to apply uh, um, a tool in the context of uh, a framework of uh, document-based uh, uh, development process. Uh, you have to be familiar with uh, rule uh, recategorization, recategorization, which is especially important if you have to do with adopted code, you have to be familiar with deviations uh, as the deviation process is an essential part of MISRA compliance. And then you have to select a style guide and maybe some metrics. Uh, all these require staff competence, of course. And there is the part uh, uh, of tool management. So tool has to be managed uh, in an appropriate way. What does it mean? So the most important part uh, is uh, uh, is that you use a tool uh, to avoid uh, manually verifying the code. So there are uh, things that you would otherwise do uh, uh, manually and you, which you don't want to do manually because the cost of doing MISA checking by hand is of course enormous. And so tools are highly recommended, but uh, in the selection of the tool, uh, you have to take into account uh, several uh, aspects. So this is uh, a, a, a small selection. You have to be aware of bug finders because they have uh, false negatives and false negatives uh, will force you again to do uh, manual reviews. Uh, you have uh, to be aware of the fact that tools, uh, there are tools that require error term configuration. I will come back to this uh, in a minute for what concerns the tool chain. And uh, also you have to uh, make sure that you choose a tool that has powerful configuration mechanism for deviation, because as I said, you will need to deviate uh, and uh, uh, support uh, from the tool for deviation is extremely, is extremely important. Okay, so uh, let me spend a few words on the most important, uh, at least subjectively, I think it is the most important point. So, uh, C and C++ compilers can have thousands of options controlling the uh, translation process. And these options uh, change uh, all aspects of the translation process. And in particular, they can change uh, the way in which the source code is interpreted. So 
once you have configured the compiler for a project, so you have chosen uh, the compilation options, uh, then uh, you have to make sure that the static analysis tool matches the particular choice uh, you have made uh, in the compiler configuration. And you may have to do this possibly for each translation unit, okay? And what you have to know is that that uh, there are hundreds of uh, implementation defined aspects in C and C++. And uh, these include uh, many aspects, uh, including, for example, predefined macros. All compilers uh, predefine uh, hundreds of uh, macros uh, in ways that uh, very often can be influenced by compile time options. So if you don't configure the tool uh, to um, take into account uh, predefined macros and all the other aspects uh, that are implementation defined, then uh, the static analysis results you get are completely meaningless. So you don't want to configure static analyzer manually for this kind of thing. So you want this to be fully automatic and fail proof. So uh, there are many features that influence the productivity uh, of the tool uh, in a work of MISA compliance. So here is my uh, personal selection. Uh, of course, number one, I already said that. So the number one feature you should be interested in is that you have not to be forced to configure the tool for the tool chain and compilation option. The tool must automatically adapt uh, to the tool chain. Then you need the powerful integration with the continuous integration and continuous deployment system. And then it features that are the subject of uh, today presentation. Simone and Michelangelo will show some of this. So you need powerful integration with IDEs, uh, filtering facilities. You need to have features to collaborate with your colleague, uh, uh, with possibly with the uh, initial tracking system or even without it advanced support for deviation, and uh, uh, last but not least, uh, you want uh, to make sure you can automatically produce uh, a final compliance report. So when you are involved into a MISRA compliance uh, uh, exercise, at the end, uh, you will have to produce a final compliance report that you will have to supply to whoever is acquiring your system. For example, if you are a tire one supplier, uh, you may have to supply this to a car maker. And so MISNA Compliance 2020 uh, is not, uh, does not constrain too much uh, the, the form of the final compliance reports, but it gives a uh, uh, precise indication of what they must uh, uh, contain. So organize are relatively free to choose uh, a format for final compliance reports. So uh, the Eclair static analysis platform already uh, supplies the, um, a printable format in Word or uh, LibreOffice format uh, to, uh, to uh, hand uh, out uh, these uh, uh, final compliance reports. And uh, in addition, it just been added. So I like it so much that I will present it. Uh, I will present it myself. So here it is. It's uh, it's uh, a spreadsheet. So uh, the new output format uh, generates a spreadsheet that can be used with uh, Excel or with uh, LibreCalc. So an, an element of the LibreOffice uh, uh, suite. And what is interesting is that uh, this uh, uh, kind of output is uh, somewhat dynamic. So these things in green, they are uh, sensitive. So they are buttons, okay? So for example, if I type uh, rough text, I will uh, see that uh, uh, the text has been wrapped into to fit into the cells. And here is the minimal amount of details. So uh, as you can see here, we have uh, MISRA guidelines and here, and here we have the number of reports. So the number of, uh, say to simplify, violations that have been found uh, in this project. So if I click on more detail, I will have more information. You see that uh, I have a new, a new uh, column and the reports uh, are, uh, are, um, are also uh, presented 
uh, with the kind of reports, it may be a violation message, so the guideline is definitely violated, or a caution, meaning that the guideline may be violated. And also, you see other things. You see that uh, um, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, backgrounds. So a red background is typical of a violation. This is an unjustified violation. So no justification has been provided for this uh, for this uh, um, for this violation. But there are also others that have a different tag so these applied or adopted for example so uh, i mentioned earlier the fact that in a, in a misra compliant project you can have adopted code so adopted code uh, um, can uh, use a, a simplified form of uh, uh, misra compliance uh, and and uh, so if i target the code adopted for example this uh, guideline can be deviated okay so let me add a little bit more detail in the more detail, I can see that, uh, uh, let me click uh, also on wrap text, okay? I have a justification here. So why is it being disapplied here? So this project I am showing is a project that is multi-language. So there is a part of code which is written in C and part of code which is written in C++. So uh, Eclair has unique support for uh, dealing with this uh, uh, multiple language project. And one of the things that has to be done, is, uh, we have to make sure that uh, uh, Misra C is not applied uh, to uh, uh, C++ code and the other way around. So this is the meaning why it has been disapplied. So there are nine violations here, but uh, they are justified. Okay, they have been disapplied. So I don't want to absorb too much time. Let me show you quickly more details. So I click on more details and I add a new column. So uh, not only I have uh, the tag, I have uh, the documentation. If this has been has been uh, has been uh, um, uh, presented, and uh, um, but I also have the the directory uh, where the violations are present. Okay, so counters now are. Uh, exploded uh, on a per directory basis, I can go on again, and I can also have the files in which the violations uh, do occur. And the more detail again, if I have a site license, then I can also have the line number. So not just the, the file where the violation is, but also the precise, well, uh, precise at the level of the line, uh, location where the main area involved in the violation is presented. So uh, the advantage of this kind of report is that uh, depending on the organization, uh, your counterpart will want to have more uh, details or less details. So you can choose after generating the report, the level of details. And of course, if you, you can ship this, uh, um, you, you can ship this uh, uh, report as it is or you can freeze it so you can remove the dynamical part you can choose for example that this is the level of details you want and you can save this uh, without the dynamical aspect so that you 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 ship it as a static uh, as a static spreadsheet okay that's all from my side thank you roberto thank you very much so now would be the time for simone to take over the the screen while he does that um, let me remind you that um, since Roberto mentioned this, uh, we have a couple of uh, training sessions uh, about uh, Mr. Compliance in uh, coming in November. Uh, so if you want to check them out or if you're interested in getting some information, uh, just drop us a note uh, to our training address. So Simone, I can see your screen now. Uh, so feel free to start when you're ready. Thank Okay, I hold. I'm Simone Ballarin, software uh, verification engineer in Baxang. And today I will introduce you to a couple of new features in Eclair 3.11. So let's start with the double click associations. And this is the CRC demo project. Uh, it's a self contained project you can download from Mantis. Uh, Mantis is our issue tracking system 
and the main communication channel between the backside technical team and the customer for both commercial and technical support. Uh, Eclair works with uh, many types of files, but two of them are particularly important for the users. And they are the .acs files and the .acd files. The first one contains all the configuration that the tool needs to run an analysis. The other one contains uh, uh, the results of the analysis. So all the reports and all the uh, outputs computed uh, during, uh, during it. And we can have also many of uh, configuration file. In this case, we have just one. Uh, and it's it is a crc.acs file, but we can also more than one of this file. And sometimes uh, it could be very tedious, open a terminal and write the part of the correct file just to run an analysis. For this reason now, uh, just by double clicking on the crc.acs file, uh, an instance of the Eclair GUI will be automatically opened uh, with the with all the configuration written in the file loaded. We check that, we can go to the load panel and see the path of the file we have selected. Of course, this is not the only way to use Eclair. Eclair can be also used by command line or it can also be integrated in your continuous integration or continuous deployment system. So uh, going through the other panel, we can see that all the configuration written, in the, written on the file have been correctly uh, loaded. And in this particular project, I have already performed an analysis. Uh, let me go to the view panel. And here we can see in this drop down menu that uh, I have already run this specific analysis and to see all the artifacts of the analysis, I can simply uh, click on this browse button. Let me do it. Okay, here we can see this uh, .data directory and it's an hidden directory. So uh, pay attention to have enabled the hidden directory on your file manager. Uh, let me uh, go into it. And now we can see the project.scd file. This is the other type of files uh, uh, I've mentioned before, and uh, it contains all the results, all the reports, and all the measures computed in the analysis. And we can also decide to move the file in other places. It's a completely standalone file, and uh, I, we can also reorganize them in a different uh, directory tree. For three reason, it uh, would be very useful to uh, open this file and see all the wrappers and all the information just by double click on it. So let me do that. And now we can see that Eclair report has been opened. And now we can see all the information about the database. And if we click on report by service, we can see also all uh, the um, service enabled in the database. So uh, now that I am in the uh, Eclair report view, I uh, take the opportunity to introduce another new feature of Eclair 3.11. And to do that, uh, uh, let me choose a random rule. For example, uh, uh, MISRC uh, 2012 uh, R, uh, rule 10.4, it's perfect. So uh, MC3R1, it's our internal code name for MISRC 2012 revision one. And uh, so let me click on the service and now we can see all the 20 violation. In this case, we don't have uh, uh, cautions and hovering with the mouse on the location of a violation, we can see that a preview of the area interest by the by the reporting uh, is, uh, is uh, shown in the bottom area of the screen. But uh, if I move the mouse, the preview will disappear. 
And to avoid that, uh, I can block uh, the preview by clicking on this magnifier lens. Uh, and now I can freely move the mouse. But uh, this preview contains a lot of uh, useful information and I may want to share it with a colleague or include it on email or also in, uh, in a document report. And uh, we can do it. In fact, the new feature of uh, Claire 3.11 is that now by clicking on the magnifier lens, also a copy of this preview uh, has been uh, saved in the clipboard of the PC. And so now I can uh, uh, open my favorite word processor. In my case, it's um, uh, LibreOffice Writer. And now I can simply paste uh, the image and uh, and we will get the image on the um, the preview on the on the document. So uh, for now, I'm done, and uh, uh, Michelangelo will continue with another new feature of Eclair. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Michelangelo from uh, the Bagsang Technical Team. For this uh, demonstration, uh, we will use uh, the new Visual Studio demo project available uh, from now on our Mantis uh, for all customers. The demo in question is a uh, Eclair uh, 311 CSC Windows Visual Studio, as you can see from uh, the folder name. So uh, let's open uh, the CSC solution of the demo with uh, Visual Studio. Okay. Uh, as you can see uh, from the top bar menu, I have uh, already installed uh, the Eclair plugin. Uh, following the procedure uh, described in the model. So I proceed by enabling it and uh, performing uh, an, um, an analysis. Okay. Okay, now we should wait a little bit. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I will take time to explain to you the fingerprint concept that uh, has become part of a class since uh, 3.11.0. Uh, fingerprints are report identifiers that persist even for subsequent analysis. Uh, we could say that they are similar to a checksum of the report information. And directly, uh, fingerprints should be unique to each database, but uh, it can happen that for very similar reports, uh, they have uh, the same fingerprint. So in, um, in short, uh, uh, these fingerprints allows us to include or exclude individual reports from the filter system and much more. I would also like to say that the plugin features you will see soon are also present for Eclipse-based IDE, Visual Studio Code, and Emacs. Okay, the build has finished and, uh, and as expected, it opened a browser page and a file explorer window with the result in uh, different formats. Uh, now let's open some validations uh, to, to show OE the integration uh, works. For example, uh, this. Okay. So, uh, control clicking on the report link, it is possible to move uh, to the area of the violation in your favorite either as you can see here, but uh, you can also uh, move to the, to the file analyzed and uh, select uh, a specific area uh, with the control and uh, the, um, uh, the either will move to that specific area selected. So, okay, uh, let's click on a report. Uh, this panel appeared below, allows me to see the methods of the violation I previously clicked on and the different areas uh, allowing me to move between uh, the areas uh, even without changing windows. Uh, furthermore, the, the integration is uh, designed to relocate the modified uh, File location, for example, uh, if I write uh, a comment uh, here, and then I click uh, on uh, the report again. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, something gone wrong. Okay. Have to enable it again. Okay. It will uh, uh, relocate uh, the, the area. This feature allows you to find the code violation even if uh, they have moved as a result of file chains without having to run a new analysis. Also, if uh, we don't want to change the window every time, we just right click on the report in the panel and click on uh, next report. Okay. And uh, this feature allows you to go to the next report of the current browser view visualization. Okay. Now, uh, um, suppose that uh, I am a project manager and I have to distribute the reports among my colleagues. Uh, I have already created the filters uh, that allow me uh, to see violation for each colleagues, uh, in this case, John and Susan. Uh, for example, by by selecting uh, John's filter, I will only see the reports that he has to solve, and counts uh, and reports will be dynamically updated, uh, changing uh, uh, filter criteria. Uh, from uh, Eclair uh, 11.0, it will be po also possible to modify and create even complex filter uh, criteria with two simple clicks. For example. By right clicking on a report and uh, uh, go to property section, clicking on the cross eye icon, it will be possible to exclude the report um, with a certain property, which uh, in this demonstration uh, uh, can be the main main file. Okay. As you can see, uh, the filter is uh, updated accordingly and the report concerning the csc.c file have disappeared okay now uh, for example let's say uh, that we want to exclude only one report from the filter so uh, just right click on the report concerned and go to the exclude from selection and select uh, in this case uh, the the current selection okay uh, with these new features, uh, creating filters uh, and editing them will be easier than ever before with the cloud. Now, uh, let's move on uh, to one of the most powerful features of a cloud. Um, let's say I have an issue tracking system and uh, I want to create issues regarding violations to assign to colleagues. What would you think if I told you that this can be done with just two, two clicks? So uh, by right-clicking on a report and going to the run section, you can run a script that will add uh, the issues to Mantis with all the report information. Okay, I have to, again. Issues uh, come with a description of the violation information about the reports, such as uh, service, uh, strictness, and more. A uh, link to directly access uh, um, to the report page. And uh, finally, um, an image will be attached with the code uh, in which the variation is present, but uh, it can do better. Let's go to the Susan assigned page. Okay. Okay. As we did before, uh, to open the issues for the issue for John, we can instead click on this icon here and see what happens. You can create an issue for each variation in the current filter and assign them directly to Susan. This feature can help you save hours and hours that you will spend on tedious and repetitive tasks. This doesn't apply only to issue tracking system. Uh, this functionality can be used to perform any type of action on reports, which can range from uh, generating new output formats to sending emails directly to your colleagues. 
without the report information. This functionality only requires the creation of a script to be already usable. Uh, since Cloud 11.0, in the installation folder, uh, you will find the script for Mantis issue ready to be used or adapted to your needs. Also, uh, we plan to add more demo run script. After having illustrated some of the features of Eclair 11.0, I leave the floor to my colleague Simone, who will give you a test of the exciting features that await you in the next release. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Uh, now it's time for a new feature that will be available in the next incoming version of Eclair. So in very large projects uh, with hundreds of thousands of uh, reports, could be very difficult to have a good overall idea of um, how the, the reports are distributed and uh, which kind of reports we have. And for these reasons, uh, uh, we have decided to completely redesign the Eclair by service view. So uh, let me uh, click on the reports by service in kind. And now we can see it is completely uh, brand new uh, Sunburst charts. And it is on a very informative chart, a chart, in fact, we can immediately notice that just three rules uh, uh, counts as more than 50% of the total amount of reports. And in particular, we can also notice uh, that uh, uh, rule uh, MISRA C 2012, uh, rule 12.2 is composed by both uh, violation and caution. If we hover with the mouse on a particular rule, we can have also additional information. For example, in this case, we have the description of the, of the rule and the strictness tag that in this case is required. And we can also note that uh, this rule counts as the 16% of the total amount of reports. If we hover with uh, the caution or the violation sector, we can, uh, we can notice that the violation counts as the 75% of the total reports of the rule, and they represent the 12.50% of the total amount of uh, reports in this analysis. So uh, another very interesting feature of this chart is that it's completely configurable. In fact, uh, we may be interested to, to add in this chart uh, the strictness information because um, uh, our company uh, could be interested in performing a MISA compliance claim. And uh, to do that, uh, we need to be um, conscious of the type of the violation we have, the strictness type of the violation. So it's very simple to test. I have simply to click in rows and type strictness and select the strictness. And now we can see the graph has been updated according to the new information, but we don't want that. We want to put the strictness information one hierarchical layer up and it's very simple. I have to simply move this string before the service tree, uh, the service information. So uh, now uh, I can immediately notice that the required, the violation and the caution caused by required uh, rules counts as the 62%, and then the remaining one are of type advisory. Here we have a missing sector because uh, we have two services uh, that are not uh, MISRA rules uh, and so they don't have uh, a strictness uh, uh, information. So also the tabular view has been updated according to the new information. I can use this slider to decide, to decide how much portion of the screen dedicated to the uh, some bars chart view and how much portion to, of the screen dedicated to the tabular view. And if I click, I can uh, restore the subdivision uh, as it was before, 
or I can completely hide the, the graph. Okay, uh, now uh, focusing on the tabular view, we can notice that also um, that we have three new uh, rows, one for each type of strictness, and all the service uh, with the specific strictness are gathered below the advisory or below the, man the required or the missing uh, row. Now, uh, as usual, we can click on, the, on a service to see all the reports, uh, but now we can do even, uh, even more. For example, if I click on advisory, I can show all the reports uh, caused by services uh, targeted with the advisory strictness, uh, or I can also click on a counter, for example, the 14, uh, clicking on the 14, I will get uh, all the violation caused by uh, services with the required strictness and uh, uh, that are violation. And I will not see the cautions, maybe because uh, I'm not interested in the caution. So let me click on the 14. And now we can see uh, the 14 violation of, uh, of the of the, the selection and we can also notice that uh, we are hiding one caution. Uh, so if I click on the clear button, I can see that um, a custom automatically generated uh, uh, se selection filter has been created and uh, I can modify the uh, further this filter if I want. And when I am ready, I can share it uh, to a colleague so that uh, my colleague can have the same, uh, can see the same sets of violation and reports. And do that is very easy because I simply need to copy this last part of the, of the address, uh, the part of the address after this uh, um, sharp uh, character and send it to a colleague and the colleague will be able just pasting the, the string on his browser or our browser to, uh, to get the uh, same set of uh, reports. So let me go back to the previous uh, view and let me talk a little bit more about the chart. The chart is completely resizable uh, and uh, to do that, I need to press the control button and use the wheel. Okay, and I can also uh, zoom in and zo uh, zoom out the mouse uh, and recompute it only basing on a specific sector. For example, by pressing control and clicking the required sector, I will get uh, this new visualization. And to go back, uh, I need to control click the center of the chart and I'm back. Uh, now, I may also be interested in add the advisory required and missing information, not on the rows, but instead in the columns. And this is also possible. I need simply to remove the strictness tag on the rows and insert it on the uh, columns. And now we can see that I have a column for each possible combination between kind and strictness. And I can also uh, sort the rows according a column by clicking the add title. So now I'm sorting the rows in a uh, descendant way and re-clicking I can change the sorting in an uh, ascendant way. That's not all because I can also save the selection, the, the configuration I've created. And I can do that clicking on the views and select the create by service and kind strictness. So now also in the next section of the Claire report and the next section of the browser, I can get the same uh, configuration of the chart and the tabular view. And to see that, I can go in the home of the Claire, and now we can see that a new link uh, has been generated. That this link report by service and kind strictness. So uh, now clicking on this link, uh, I will uh, be redirected 
in the custom visualization we have created a couple of seconds ago. So uh, that's all for now. Thank you, Simone. Thank you very much. Um, so moving uh, to questions now. Um, right, I'll start with one uh, for Roberto. Um, uh, the question is, so basically with the report you showed at the very beginning, uh, we could uh, show our clients a simple list of warnings with the corresponding uh, justifications. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, a list of warning with a variable degree of detail, depending on uh, who your your uh, counterpart is. So this uh, a new kind of uh, uh, spreadsheet report has been added uh, upon request for uh, uh, Tier One and Tier Two suppliers. So um, uh, car makers uh, often require uh, a, a final report, uh, a final compliance report in. Uh, in a spreadsheet format, uh, but the precise requirements uh, vary from one to the other. So by providing a, a dynamically uh, detailed selectable version of this, uh, of this uh, uh, spreadsheet report, uh, uh, we have, uh, I think, simplified the thing considerably. Actually, uh, two major car makers uh, I will not mention have uh, basically unofficially approved the, the format of the new report. So they have been used successfully already to provide reports to them. So, and they like them very much. Thank you, Roberto. Um, next question, I think Michelangelo, we can reply to this together. The first part would be for you. Uh, we have an Eclair license. Where do I find uh, the new plugin for Visual Studio? Uh, well, uh, the new Visual Studio uh, plugin uh, can be found uh, in the installation folder of uh, Eclair, in the folder um, Share and uh, uh, Integration. Uh, but uh, you can, uh, you will find it also in um, Mantis uh, in the demo project uh, uh, because um, we we will update it uh, dynamically. So you, you don't have to wait uh, a new release, uh, but uh, we will update it uh, over time. So... In Mantis, sure. Okay. And and the, the other part was, is it available for all types of licenses? And the same for the possibility of automatically assigning issues to peers from within the tool. And I will answer this. Yes, uh, all features that we showed today are um, available. Uh, to all kinds of uh, licenses, um, except for uh, line numbers in spreadsheet reports, which is a feature that uh, is only available if you have a site, a multi-site or enterprise uh, license. Um, let me check other questions. So um, is it possible to cut and paste the pie chart or export in the report? Okay, for now it's not possible to export the, the pie chart. Of course, you can take a screenshot of the screen and you can use the, the, the chart in, uh, in other places. But we will uh, consider to include this feature you have proposed in the next versions of Eclair. So thank you for the suggestion. Mm. Which language can be developed a run action script? Yeah, you, you pass to a client only a command to be executed. So you can write it uh, in uh, C, in um, JavaScript, uh, or uh, Java, for example. You can write it in uh, which language uh, you want. Thank you, Michelangelo. The next one I think is for Simone. Uh, can I remove a rule from the selection? I think you might want to share the screen for. Yeah, sure. sure okay. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. Uh, just uh, a moment. Okay. Uh, so it's very simple. Remove a rule. For example, uh, I can remove uh, rule seventeen dot seven, and I can do it by seeing by simply operating on the filters. So let me create a new uh, a new filter. Uh, for example, Simone and go to create Simone. And now I need uh, to add a child condition 
uh, of uh, of type service here and uh, select the rule I want to hide. And we said I want to hide uh, rule 17.7. .7. And now the graph has been updated according to the new filter. So the filters uh, will modify also the, the visualization of the graph. Thank you, Simone. Uh, right, we have um, a few other questions. Hold on. Um, I'm scrolling in the Q&A uh, section. Uh, does, does the ID integration work with uh, VS Code? And uh, what about Eclipse? Uh, the ID integration, yes, work with uh, uh, VS Code. And uh, also the same integration you have seen uh, is available for all Eclipse-based IDEs. So Eclipse, but uh, also for other IDEs that uh, they are based to uh, Eclipse. Okay, very good. Um, we have another one. I'm not sure it's going to reply to this one. Uh, sorry, but I did not understand how to generate the report in Excel format from Claire. Uh, well, it's, uh, I can try answering this, even though I forgot the exact syntax. It's an option to Eclair report. Uh, Eclair report is a program generating the, all the output formats, uh, from, uh, the Eclair database. And now we don't remember the exact syntax, but it's just a, 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 an option uh, of a clear report uh, that where you uh, you select uh, the output file and, and yeah, it is a uh, uh, reports underscore tab. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. I did it yesterday, but I already forgotten. So yes, report tab because they are reports in tabular format. Very good. Okay. So, um, uh, thank you, Michelangelo and, and thank you, Simone for taking the time, uh, to, to do this, uh, demo. Um, so, um, a special thanks to Roberto for the initial focus on, uh, static analysis tool management and, uh, Misra Compliance. And of course, to all of you for, uh, attending, uh, clearly, if you have more questions, uh, feel free to drop us an email at info at bugsang, uh, com. We are always up for a chat about your projects and how to bring them into the level of misra competence that you desire. Um, if you liked what you saw today, don't be a stranger. Uh, we can consult you on the best solution for your use case. Um, as usual, as I wrote in the Q&A section, uh, the recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. So uh, make sure that you subscribe and turn on the little notification bell to get notified uh, of new uploads. Um, right, so this is it from us today. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys uh, very soon. And until next time, have a nice day. Uh, bye, guys.